Hey Math 43, so I want to take a moment and talk with you about the law of large numbers. I am going to go over its official definition and then we're going to do our own little law of large numbers experiment. I'm going to talk a little bit about how the law of large numbers applies to gambling and how the law of large numbers applies to insurance, um, like car insurance, life insurance, something to that effect. And uh, then we're going to take a look at a second website just so we can see the law of large numbers play out. So I hope by the end of this video, you have a little bit more of an understanding of what I what the law of large numbers tells us. How, how does the law of large numbers operate in the real world? So let's start with its official definition. So for the law of large numbers, it says, as the number of repetitions of a random experiment increases, the relative frequency of an event will tend to converge towards the probability of the event. So we're going to run our own little law of large numbers experiment. I abbreviate it with LOLN. Nobody else does. Okay, so if you say LOLN uh, in a text message, nobody's really going to understand what that is, unless you're texting a fellow statistician. And then maybe even not. Okay, so maybe halt on that. But for us, we'll say LOLN. Um, we're going to take one die, roll it 20 times, and we're going to count the number of times we roll a four and then you're going to report it to me and we're going to keep track. Now, this experiment is designed for an in-class uh, or a face-to-face -face class. So I would have each student roll their own little um, die 20 times and they would keep track of the number of fours they rolled. So with all of that in mind, let, let's start to back up a little bit. We're going to do it electronically right now, right? We're going to do it just through this video together. Um, but I want to start talking about the, the words here. So it says, as the number of repetitions of a random experiment increases. So keeping that part in mind, when I talk about first trial, second trial, third trial, this would be the first student's 20 rolls. This would be the second student's 20 rolls the third student's 20 rolls. So we're increasing the number of repetitions of our random experiment. And again, our random experiment for this setting is just rolling a die. And each student's rolling it 20 times so that I can increase the number of repetitions. And then it'll say the relative frequency of an event will tend to converge towards the probability of an event. Now we've talked about relative frequency since chapter one. It's your frequencies divided by your sample size. All right, and now let's talk about the theoretical probability for our experiment of rolling a four. So if I'm talking about the probability that I would roll a four, let me go ahead and write that out. Now you can, I'll put it up here, I'll put a little text box. So the probability of rolling a four would be equal to, and you can imagine we have a sample space of six, right? Because I can roll a one, two, three, four, five, or six, and I'm interested in rolling a four. So if I'm going with this, oops, let me move that back out a little. I have a one, well, where did that go? I have a one out of six chance of making that happen. And let's see what that's equal to on our calculator as a decimal. So if I do one out of six, I'm looking at something pretty close to 17%. So let me just take note of that number and put that in right here that I have about a 17% chance of making that happen. So I can't have each of us go through and give us our 20 die rolls and our frequency counts because um, we aren't in a face-to-face -face class right now, but I can fake it uh, on the internet. The internet's got a bunch of simulations. So, so let's try this, okay? And I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna click this over to relative frequency and I wanna just roll one die at a time, all right? You can roll, I forget how many this, this will let you roll up to three dice at a time. We're gonna go one die at a time. And you can see our sample space here, one, two, three, four, five, or six. And I'm interested in this relative frequency. All right, and if we click back here, I think it should be close to 17%. And it doesn't mean that each time out, it will be exactly 17%, all right? But the law of large numbers tells me that that relative frequency should converge towards the probability. So when you hear converge, it means it should get closer to. So let's keep our eye on the prize with this 17%. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna roll 10 at a time and then we'll go 20 at a time, right? So you can see my total rolls are up to 20. So take a look at the probability, or I should say the relative frequency of rolling fours. So you can see at this point, 
about 15% of my rolls have been fours. And if it helps you to think of it as frequencies, right? So at this point, out of the 20 die rolls, this person had three fours, okay? So I'm gonna do another 20. And we're gonna see here that in those next 20, for whatever reason, I didn't roll a four. If I wanna click this back to relative frequency, you can see it's much smaller now, right? It's 0 0.075. Okay. So let me keep on doing this. I'll go back to frequencies. Let's do 100, okay? So, and I'll do another 100. So you can see the frequencies are getting pretty high because at this point I've simulated rolling 240 die. So let's see where our relative frequencies live at this point. All right, so now it's at 0.179, right? That is getting closer and closer to this 17%. So I'm gonna really bump this up. I'm gonna fake doing 10,000 rolls at a time and you can see that 17% lighten up right there on the floor. If I add another 10,000, or excuse me, yes, 10,000, we're at 0.167. And you might say, well, that's, that's now under 17%. But actually, if we click it back to here, it's even closer to what the actual probability was, right? So what the law of large numbers is saying is that if the probability of an event, and I'll even make this a little more exact, if the probability of an event is 0.167, if you keep repeating that experiment time and time and time and time again, or in this case, I've faked rolling that die 20,240 times, you can see that this relative frequency has gotten exactly close or very close in this case to the probability. So if we kind of zoom out, what is the law of large numbers telling us? It's saying that if we think the likelihood of something happening is about 17% and then we continue to do that thing, what we see in the real world will match what we think we will see. So in this case, right, I was thinking I should see about 17% fours when I roll this die. And what actually happened, I saw about 17% fours. So again, what I thought would happen match what actually happened. So where this plays itself out, or at least a couple of examples where it plays itself out in the real world is, is gambling, all right? That's the, the fun one to talk about. So every game of chance is set up for you, the player, to lose. Every single game, blackjack, roulette, craps, all of them. Uh, poker's a different issue because that involves bluffing and playing against people. But when you're playing against the house, when I say the house, we mean the casino. So every game in that house is set up for you to lose. So what that means for the casino is that they know when they have a large number of people playing on any given evening, there's lots of people playing at a casino. They know that on average, those people will lose, right? Because every game is set up for players to lose. It doesn't mean there's an exception, not an exception, excuse me. There's the exceptions, somebody's gonna win big, all right? But most of the people, the law of large numbers, tells us that most folks are going to lose. So in a commercial, you might hear something like, oh, blah, 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 played the slot machines, and he or she won like $10,000. And that's great. That does happen to somebody. But what they're not telling you is the 10,000 people that lost, and they lost more money than that one person won. All right, and if you go to uh, Vegas or Tahoe or Reno or Atlantic City, look around. There are tons of casinos. They are not short on money. It is better to own a casino than to play at a casino. And the law of large numbers is saying that since each of those games are set up for players to lose, we know that the more people play, the more they will lose. So you'll hear frequently in... Um, in gambling advice, they'll say walk away. I mean, I do that when I play blackjack. I know to walk away. I know if I stay too long, the casino will eventually take my money, even though I have betting strategies and I'm card counting. Well, with the card counting, you can actually kind of flip it, but I don't card count in real life that often because it's, it's frowned upon. Um, so just be aware of that, right? The law of large numbers, the casinos know that most of the folks will lose. That's the law of large numbers, all right? They don't know who the individual person is that's gonna be winning, all right? Um, it could be you, it could be somebody else, but they also know that even if that one or two people win, there's so many other folks at the casino losing, it offsets that, right? Law of large numbers. What they think will happen will actually happen. So they think most people will lose and most people will actually lose.
okay? Um, insurance, like car insurance, works this way too. So your premium is set up um, based on how much risk they think you are as a particular driver. And there's all sorts of factors, gender, age, type of car, that kind of thing. But the data they're using is from a large pool of past drivers. So they'll take a look and say, well, of all the teenage males, we know that if you have 10,000 teenage males, then maybe three of them will get into car accidents, something to that effect. So they go, well, if those three are going to get into car accidents and I have to pay out X number of dollars, I'll set everybody's premium at some, a certain level. So the law of large numbers says, well, if I insure, um, I don't know, 20,000 teenagers, I know a few of them will get into a car accident. I don't know which ones, but the law of large numbers tells me most of them won't get into a couple or get into accidents, but a few will. So that's how I can set their premium. They're playing their odds on a large group of people not the small group of people, right? So that's what the law of large numbers is telling us. So I go back to this, this definition, right? The relative frequency of an event, whether that's rolling a die or playing a gambling game or driving a car and maybe getting into an accident, the frequencies of those events will converge towards the probability, right? So what we see actually happening will get closer to what we think should happen with the number of repetitions increasing, okay? All right, so let's look at this, this other website. I'm going to um, do, we're going to flip a coin. All right, let's get it to load. Now you can flip a fair coin if you want. You can set it at 50-50 for probability of heads. I'm going to make a biased coin. So let's say it'll flip a heads. We'll go bias. We'll go, it'll only flip a head 30% of the time. Let me see if I can get it there. Yeah, 30% of the time. All right, so I'm going to toss, let's do 10 for initial, okay? Now, if I was going to toss a coin 10 times and the probability of heads was 30%, I would expect to get three heads. That would be my guess. But you can imagine if I flipped 10 coins and then you flipped 10 coins and another student flipped 10 coins and another and another, we wouldn't all get exactly three each time, right? Somebody's going to get four. Somebody's going to get two. Somebody's going to get nine, right? But what the law of large numbers says is that even with all that variability, eventually it will even out to 30%, right? So as the number of repetitions of our experiment increases, the relative frequency will converge towards the probability. So let's, let's just toss the 10 heads. It's usually slower when you do it this way, all right, when you go a few at a time. So they tossed my 10 coins and it looks like I've got two out of 10 heads. So there's my relative frequency, right? It's at 20% right now. And my probability was at 30%, okay? Let's toss another 10, see where this is going. All right, so I tossed another 10, and now I ha I've had three heads out of 20, so I'm at 15%, right? So even though if I was tossing 20 coins, I would have expected six of them to be heads. I've only seen three of them as heads so far. Not to worry, right? The law of large numbers is on your side. And right now we're looking at the law of small numbers. I've only rolled 20, excuse me, tossed 20 coins. It's really not that much. So I'm going to kick this up to 200. All right, and you're just going to see it blaze on by. So let's do this. All right. Wait for it. And where did we land? So now we're much closer to 30%, right? We were at 15% before, now we're at 31%. Because again, our relative frequency is going to get closer and closer to this probability. That's what the law of large numbers says. If you're supposed to get 30% heads, you're going to get 30% heads eventually. All right, and I always get the question, how large is large? That's a great question for another time. We're going to talk about how large your sample sizes need to be um, when we get to categorical and numerical data in Chapter 7. And they both have different definitions, so, so we will talk about that. All right, so let me just do one more set of 200, see where we line up. All right, so we got even closer to 30%, right? We're at 29.8%. So I could keep doing this forever, but I don't even need to. The law of large numbers is on my side. I know that this number will get dangerously close to that number as the number of tosses increases. And right now I have simulated, you can see here, um, 420 tosses, 295 of which were tails, 
125 of which were heads, and you can see those two relative frequencies adding up to one, because relative frequencies always need to total one, right, With, between your event and its complement, because something has to happen. All right, guys, so we're going to work on a multiple choice question, and I'll see you in a bit. Okay, bye.